First story. OP divorced his wife after she accused him of cheating with her daughter, whom he raised as his child, believing her cult family, whom she went and see with years ago due to their forced marriage. Now she has reconciled with them behind OP's back, been brainwashed by them, and is punishing her innocent daughter. So OP divorced her, taking his daughter so ex-wife could rot with her cult family again. Me 44M, my wife Grace 42F. Fake names for obvious reasons. Same with throwaway accounts. Married for 13 years, together for 16. Quick backstory. I met Grace about the time I got out of the military. It was a medical discharge. I met her while I was at the hospital for surgery. She was a nurse on the floor I was staying on, single mom, divorced for a couple of years. I left the military, went back to school, and now I work from home as a software engineer, more or less. We started dating, but took it slow the first couple of years because of her daughter, Maya, who was five at the time. Grace is still a nurse, and Maya goes to college. I would have said, until last month, that our marriage was pretty solid. We've had arguments. I admit I was kind of SHT at housekeeping when we first moved in together, because I was not used to how much kids tear things up around the house. But other than that, it was good. No step-parent issues. I had an active role in Maya's life because her own father lives overseas for work. We went on dates. Intimacy has always been great. We wanted kids but it wasn't on the cards for us. Honestly, I'm a bit blindsided. I've had friends who were blindsided by divorce, but I never understood how. Usually there were problems that they glossed over, and then suddenly their wives would leave them, and they just didn't see it coming. But the rest of us could see it coming from a mile away. So here I am saying the same thing, and maybe I just missed something huge. The past few months, Grace has been more stressed than usual. Ever since COVID, she's been burned out and I asked her multiple times if she wanted to quit her job, at least for a couple of years. I thought the burnout was coming to a head. She was withdrawn, angry. She snapped at me constantly. She ridiculed Maya over everything. But she's my wife. She was traumatized by the pandemic, and both Maya and I were understanding. We would do okay with just my salary. So last month, I sat her down to suggest again that she quit and take some time off to heal. Then everything blew up. She started yelling at me that she knew what I was doing. She's known for months. She has proof. I didn't know what she was talking about at first, but it didn't take long to realize she was accusing me of infidelity. I can't lie, I was angry as hell. I opened my phone, handed it to her, and told her to go through it. I went and got my laptop, unlocked it, and told her to go through that. The whole time she's still shouting at me about some other woman. I don't have traditional social media accounts. I'm on Lobsters, Hacker News, and I have a Reddit account. I told her to check everything. There's no secret Facebook or Instagram or whatever. No messages from anyone. I opened Discord, even Slack. Everything I could think of. But she wouldn't even look at it. She just got angrier and angrier. And then she picked up my laptop and threw it. That's when I had enough and left. I went to my parents' house. All the while, Grace was texting and calling and leaving more and more unhinged messages about this woman she knows I'm with. When I got to my parents' house. I called her once and told her I needed a few days because I was too angry to handle talking to her. My sister called the next morning and told her Grace had called her multiple times as well to see if I was really there. After a few days, I called Grace to talk, and at first the conversation was productive. She apologized for throwing the laptop, but she said I made her so angry because I was being so calm. I told her I was not calm because I was being accused of cheating on my wife and I was furious, but it was either try to talk it out or start shouting which I didn't think was a good idea. Then she got angry, told me I was twisting her words, and things felt apart quickly. She started going on and on again that she knew I was cheating. She had proof. I asked her what proof, because I would like to see it. I don't remember how we got there. But she said she was going to send everything to the lawyer, and I said fine, send a copy to mine because this was going nowhere. She got really quiet after that and asked if I was serious, and I said I wasn't going to stay in a marriage where my wife thinks I cheated on her but won't tell me why. We ended the call there, and I've been at my parents' house since. My dad is on my side, and my mom thinks Grace is just having a rough time, and that we can talk this through. My sister is pissed she got dragged into it, so she thinks we're both arseholes, and Meyer is miserable because she's being torn between me and her mom. I feel like maybe I jumped the gun and should have stayed calmer. Edit. My morning meetings are finally over, and I need to concentrate on my job, so I'm going to be logging out for the day. I'm going to talk to my mom to see if she'll talk to Grace. Suggest therapy, couples therapy, etc. 
I believe those of you who suggested missing reasons are correct. Something is causing this. I just don't know if it's something I've done, stress in her life, or if it's full-on projection. I don't think it is. But you never know. I'll assure Meyer again that she has a place here no matter what. As far as I'm concerned, she's my daughter. And of course she's got a place here if she needs it. However, I also won't try to pressure her, considering that's her mom. And I know this is pulling her in two ways. Second edit. Okay, so I took a quick break and thought I'd come back and read a couple comments. But there are way too many to read. But there is an overall theme to them, so I'll try to quickly address them here. Someone asked if I was cheating. I understand why you asked that. I never came out and said in the post, but let me assure you, no, I'm not cheating. I never have. Granted, those are just words, and I'm sure some will think that I'm lying. But I love my wife. I never wanted to cheat. I'm not a saint. I've been attracted to people. I think Salma Hayek is gorgeous. But the thought of cheating has never crossed my mind. A lot of people think she's cheating on me. Again, I don't think so. She's home every night at the same time. She doesn't hide away her devices. Could there be someone at work? Yes. Do I think she's cheating? No. But as many pointed out, those are famous last words. Talking about divorces staying calm. I have PTSD. I've worked a lot in therapy over the years to process intense emotions. It's why I stay calm. Not because I am, but because if I don't, then I get overwhelmed. The talk to my lawyer comment was one of those moments I didn't process well. I don't think it's a good idea to divorce her after over a decade together because of this past month. On the other hand, I know that because it's not a safe place for me mentally. I'll stay at my parents until we get this resolved. Could it be hormones? Yes, it could. However, my wife is already taking hormones because of a medical procedure she had when she was in her early 30s. Like I said, it wasn't in the cards to have kids. She has to see the doctor usually every six months to check her levels. Her last appointment was in March. However, her mood changes started before that. Mental health issues. This is what I think it is personally. Like I said, Grace has been building up to a burnout for a while now. These mood changes started a while ago. It's why I brought up taking time off of work. It's why I brought it up again last month when she blew up at me. I think this is stress. It's why I haven't actually contacted a lawyer. Because I hope my marriage can be saved. I think I just wanted reassurance from a neutral third party, because I'm so far out of my depth here. To those who say don't get my mom involved. My mom already is. She and Grace are incredibly close. She's called Grace every day to check on her. Grace has no contact with her own family. So I'm not really involving mom as much as I'm just asking her to suggest marriage counseling to her the next time she calls. I sure as hell don't want to get some other party involved in this, so I'm not going to contact a friend to talk to my wife. I haven't been in contact with my wife since I left. I probably should have clarified that. She messages me. Sometimes it's the same silly stuff we've always talked about. Like random memes she's found or crap her co-workers are doing. And sometimes it's her begging me to just tell her the truth. I'm exhausted mentally from this all, and at the end of my rope. I've suggested therapy a couple of times already, but that's gotten nowhere. Hopefully, mom bringing it up might help. Why the throwaway? Because my co-workers also have Reddit accounts, and I don't want them to see this post. They might? But hopefully a software guy in his 40s with a wife in nursing is generic enough to American audiences that they won't know it's me. But if it's on my actual account, they definitely will. No one at work knows, and I'd like to keep it that way. I think that's everything. I want to add though, please don't disparage my wife. I'm upset over this because my wife is a great woman. She's smart, she's funny, and she's sweet. She's been a wonderful mother, and that's why I've been worried the past few months about her. Because this is so out of character. Additional information from OP. Well yes. I would love to tell you why she thinks I'm cheating, but she literally won't tell me. If it's because I'm on my computer too much, or because I use my phone weird, or I'm taking phone calls at odd hours, I don't know. She will not tell me why she thinks I'm cheating. And that's the worst part of this. I could at least figure out what I might need to change. Maybe I'm not being intimate enough. Maybe I haven't set up enough dates. Maybe she's feeling like I'm being distant. But I don't know. And I want to know. I love my wife. I've loved my wife since our second date. I knew I wanted to marry here after the first month. This isn't an argument over me, not doing the dishes right, or her watching the rest of Fall of the House of Usher without me. She's accusing me of cheating on her, and she won't tell me why. And I can't fix what I don't know. And because I don't know, you don't know. If you can track my wife down and get her side of the story, please pass it on to me.
I would also like to know her side of the story. Relevant comments. OP on getting therapy for himself and his wife. OP. I'd be happy for any sort of therapy. I've had to do it on and off for years, but she refuses because she thinks it's useless. I'll suggest it, but I don't hold out too much hope. I'm thinking because she's resistant to going to a therapist, I might suggest she goes and checks with her PCP. She's been showing symptoms of burnout for a while, so depression, exhaustion, and getting annoyed with us really easy. I personally think this is some kind of issue with stress. Mustang 19671967 Usually when blanket accusations, it is because they are doing it. Investigate her cheating, especially if in an at-fault state. OP, I don't think she's cheating, but then you're right. It could be projection. She's never accused me of this before. This is brand new, hence why it was so startling. If she had been doing this for years, I think you'd be right. It's why I'm having so much trouble with the whole situation. None of it makes sense. OP on. If his wife is likely to receive strange texting scams from someone else that accuses him of cheating on his wife. OP. This is something I never even thought of, so I will definitely look into this. Thank you. I had no idea that this was even a thing. But it would explain why she hasn't shown me the proof yet because she's waiting on it. Quick update. Five days later. I don't have the energy or patience to go back to Ada, so I am just doing this here. A quick and dirty update. No. My wife is not cheating on me. As far as I know, she's not sick, got a tumor, or showing signs of early dementia. If she were, those things would be easier to process. Maybe it's perimenopause or menopause. I don't know. I don't care. Yes, I will be seeking a divorce. No, I will not go into it further. I have already spoken to a lawyer. Maya is currently living with me and my parents. I will be looking for an apartment condo to rent soon. I feel like I've overstayed my welcome. Maya is thinking of taking some time off to visit her dad. I don't blame her. I'm a effing mess right now. I don't even know why I logged back into this account other than to say no. My wife really wasn't cheating on me. I can honestly say I wish she was. It'd be so much effing easier than this SHT. Thanks for the advice and the concern. Update. Three days later. I don't know what to do. I'm sorry if this isn't the right community. But my friend suggested it and I thought maybe this might be the right place to vent or get advice or something. I'm not sure what information is necessary or relevant, so I'm just going to write everything down I can think of. I've been married to my wife Grace for 13 years. We've been together for 16. When we first got together, she told me she was in low-no contact with her family. There was some obvious trauma regarding it, and as someone with PTSD, I respected that she may not be ready to share it. Plus, my family loved her, so I was happy to share. After dating for a while, right before I proposed, she told me more about her family. Grace is from a deeply fundamentalist Christian family. I know the umbrella stuff was a big deal as well as marrying young and a lot of really f ed up SHT. She got married at 16 to the son of family friends. He was 19. She was kind of lucky in a way because her ex-husband moved her across the state and away from her family, and she was able to finish school and start college. From what I can gather, he wanted out of the cult too. She had their daughter, Maya, when she was 21, and he was finishing up his last year of school. When he finished school, he went off to graduate school in Europe, and she moved back home to her family. They got divorced soon after. After the divorce, her family tried to marry Grace off to a guy that was over twice her age, which was her cue to finally get out too. From what little she would tell me, it was not an easy exit. A lot of violence was involved, and she suggested there was saw, attempted kidnapping from the older man. However, eventually she got out. She took her daughter, moved in with a distant aunt, and cut off most of the family. A few years later she met me, and the rest was history. Until this year, the past few months, my wife has been very snappish, with sudden bouts of anger and withdrawal. She's a nurse, and I thought at first she was burned out. She was working days at a time with no break during the pandemic. I thought the trauma of that, and just non-stop COVID SHT was finally coming to a head and I suggested a few times maybe she should take some time off. The last time I suggested it, she blew up at me and started accusing me of cheating. It was an intense fight. She said she had proof, and I wanted to see it. She threw my laptop, and I left. We had another fight a bit later over the phone where she said she'd send the proof of my infidelity to a lawyer, and I said pass it on to mine. After that, we mostly talked via text, and it was mostly her sending me updates at work or silly memes. Periodically she'd plead with me to tell her the truth about the cheating, 
but I had no idea what the hell she was talking about. For the past few weeks I've been waiting to see what proof she had. For her to talk to me more than a few memes here and there, anything. I've been living with my parents, and it's been effing stressful. I was thinking I was never going to find out what was going on until a few days ago, when she showed up at my parents to talk. And finally she told me the proof of me cheating, which was that her coworker had told my wife she had seen me with another, much younger woman. So okay, I can handle that. I asked some follow-up questions. What did she look like? Where was this, etc. I figure out pretty quickly that she's talking about Maya. We go to the hospital to eat lunch with her sometimes, and her coworker must have seen us together. Simple mistake, right? Except my wife knew that her coworker was describing Maya, and was more or less suggesting I was cheating on her with the child I helped raise and calls me dad. I tried not to get angry, because I know she has a lot of trauma with older men being with younger women. Especially after what her parents tried to force her to do. But at the same time, I felt disgusted and betrayed she'd ever think I'd do that. And the conversation devolved into another argument. During that argument, she admitted that it wasn't just any co-worker. The co-worker is her first cousin, Shelia. And Shelia is still in the church. It all starts tumbling out that she's been hanging out with Shelia during downtime. She's been calling and talking to her dad. The one that tried to marry her off to a man older than I am right now. She's been going to church meetings again, when I thought she was at work. And you know what? None of the church stuff would be a problem. If she wants to be Christian, whatever. Except everything she's spewing is a contradiction to every other thing she's spewing. First, I evidently am in my prime years for children. I'm 44. I'm past my prime for kids. Meyer is 21, and I'm thrilled to have her living at home. But I'm also thrilled she can clean her own bathroom. Because my dad is secular Jewish. He's evil and that evil is passed down to me. My mom is more evil because she was Christian she never really was. Her family was lapsed Catholic. I'm not sure she's ever even been to Mass. But mom turned her back on the church and didn't raise me Christian, which is evil. My mom, a woman who loves my wife probably more than she loves me, is now a sinner and deceitful, according to my wife. But more than all of that, the part that makes me sickest and pushed me to actually call a lawyer was that she suggested our daughter, a brilliant, Amazing kid that loves her mom so much. Is to blame because she's young and flaunting herself. It's all jumbled up in my brain. There was so much more. She went on for what felt like hours before I asked her to leave. I wasn't a good provider because she had to work. I know I reminded her that I was suggesting she take time off from work. But evidently that was proof that I was just trying to isolate her from her family. There were so many freaking threats and conspiracies. Like suggesting she get therapy which I've been doing since before the pandemic, but especially after the pandemic, was me trying to brainwash her to be okay with me having an affair with Maya. I don't understand any of it. I don't know where to go from here. I don't know how to even start. That evening, after my wife left, Maya called crying because her mom was saying some really awful SHT to her. So I told Maya to come stay with my parents and me. And that just added flames to fire. So now Grace thinks we're living together. I called a lawyer. And I think my marriage is over. And I don't know what to do. I don't know where the fundamentalist SHT starts, where the conspiracy ends, or what I'm even supposed to do to fix things. I don't know that I can fix things. I don't even know how I miss things falling apart to this extent. Update. One week later. I'm a bit drunk. Be patient with me. I saw my wife earlier today. I wanted to sit down and start talking about what divorce was going to look like between us. We have over a decade of our finances, our home, and our lives intermingled. I've been paying for Maya's school. It's her job that we get most of our insurance coverage from. I put the down payment on our house, but she's paid off just as much of it as I have. We'll have lawyers do all this, but at the same time I just wanted to look at her and make her see what she was doing. Divorce isn't just a word. It's a real concrete thing. The lives that we have been living are over as we know it. We're not old. It's not like we can't move on from this. But at the same time, I've been her husband for so long that I don't know who I am without her. When I got home, I started drinking. And I haven't stopped all evening. Which is effing stupid. Don't do what I did. I just couldn't stop. I kept seeing here, sitting across from me. Refusing to look at me. I don't know her anymore. And I'm not sure if I ever did. My therapist talks about masking, right? Because of the PTSD, ADHD, and SHT. I mask a lot with coworkers or clients or whatever. But I never had to mask at home. And now I'm wondering if this entire marriage, she was just masking being happy with me. Was she miserable the whole time? Did she pick me because I was stable and a good dad figure to Maya? 
I'm not ugly. I'm not handsome either. RSX life was good. But was it? Was she just doing it because she learned all that SHT as a kid that she had to please her husband? I feel sick. I feel like I abused her because I don't know how much of it was her, and how much was just the programming she went through in that effing church. And Maya, Christ, Maya is just. She's not great. She's trying so hard to be stoic and strong, but she's my baby girl. I taught her how to fish, and she's better at it than I am. She taught me how to knit when I was having trouble with work during the pandemic and struggling with the lockdown. She's such an amazing kid, and she's hurting, and I hate Grace for that. I hate her for hurting our kid. But I love her. And that hurts too. I don't know what the point of this was. I came back to read over the theories about cheating on me or menopause. I thought what we had was fixable. I thought if I worked at it, we could change things. And it's just over. It's so effing final. Let that be a lesson. Sometimes SHT just ends, and there is nothing any of us can do about it. Relevant comments. Rixendra. You and Maya will get through this. And she will need you more than ever now. I was hoping this was going to be a silly misunderstanding. Keep Maya out of this cult, if possible. Best of luck to both of you. And take care of yourself. Maybe get some kind of counseling. This would be a major transition, if it were a simple divorce. And it is very not simple. Second story. I love my husband so much that I divorced him and went NC after he demanded an open marriage, ruining our nine-year relationship because he ain't the man I was in love with. My husband 28M and I 29F have been together for nine years, married for seven. We got a not-so-classic shotgun, wedding to give ourselves better chances of receiving custody of his half-sister 10F when their mom suddenly passed away. Despite only being 20 and 21 years old, we did receive full legal custody over her absent father. This information isn't super relevant to the current situation, but it really sets the tone of our relationship with the sacrifices we made together and the things we each had to give up personally to raise this beautiful little girl. We don't have any children together, but his sister is now 17 and moved in with an older, more financially privileged aunt last year. Over the past year of this newfound alone time, I feel like we have flourished personally and as a couple. We never fight, arguments are rare, and we are pretty good at coming to understandings and apologizing when necessary. Basically, I feel we had a pretty healthy relationship. We each do little things for each other. I receive flowers no less than 10 times a year. We go on little vacations together and are generally really good. I guess a bit of the spark was sputtering out for a while. But I feel like that's normal for a relationship as long as ours. Fast forward to this past October. My husband seems like he has been depressed, which is normal for this time of year because of the timing of losing both his mom and dad in different years around the same time. The holidays are tough for him, so I get it and try to be there for him. He had previously planned a self-harm attempt because of family issues before we met, so I take his mental health very seriously. He sits me down to have a serious conversation and starts it by saying he wants to open up our relationship. I felt my heart drop to my stomach, but stayed silent and let him talk. He doesn't go into why. He just jumps right into rules and explains how he wants me to find someone first before he starts looking for someone himself. When I asked him why, he couldn't explain it and fumbled his words. I asked him if he already had someone in mind for himself, and of course he denies it. I couldn't help it. I definitely blew up. I was totally blindsided by this proposal. I slept on the couch after my outburst, and he didn't even try to come after me to explain anything, which kind of made me feel worse. I had never felt so unwanted in my life than in that moment. I have never given the impression that I was the kind of girl to be open to that kind of relationship. I will never judge anyone for wanting to live that kind of life, but it's just not for me. He went to work the next day, but I had the day off and really thought about my situation. After crying for hours, I came to the realization that this was the end of our marriage. Even suggesting an open marriage was a deal-breaker for me, I realized. While he was still at work, I moved all his stuff out of our bedroom into his sister's old room, technically a spare room now. He comes home from work, ready to talk it out. After talking through more of why he wants this, I've come to realize several things. He is way kinkier than he lets on, and is disappointed with our bedroom life. He knows I'm not on the same level, and doesn't want to push me past my boundaries to try things he knows I won't like. When I asked how he knows I won't like to try these new things, he explains they are an escalation of things he already knows I'm not down for but won't go into specifics. He also is unhappy with how infrequently we have SX, but has never really put in the effort to change anything regarding it, just complained over and over and expected me to just be ready to do the deed any minute of the day. 
he feels we have nothing in common now that his sister is gone. For context, he is more of the outdoorsy type, whereas I like to stay inside and read or play video games. I do venture out once in a while to do things he likes together, and do genuinely enjoy them myself when I go, like kayaking and skiing. I do understand that it isn't as often as he would like, though. Because we got married so young, there are a lot of things neither of us really got to experience or try mostly actually. He is mourning the loss of his young twenties, and never getting to sleep around and explore his kinks. Part of the rules he explained was that we wouldn't technically be sleeping around with whoever we wanted. He called it an open marriage, but described it more as polyamory, where we would each have a boyfriend or girlfriend of our own that we went on dates and did things together. Someone we were each allowed to love and be with actually. An emotional connection was pivotal for him, which broke my heart to pieces. During our talk, I told him I would never be able to look at him the same. I would never be enough for him, and he was basically trying to get a pass for guilt-free cheating in my eyes. I told him it sounded like he wanted to be with someone else without ever leaving the comfort of his marriage. Knowing he could date around and not worrying if those relationships would fail because he could just come home to me. He tried denying these things, saying he wanted to explore himself as actually, but didn't want to lose me in the process. He tried getting me to agree to marriage counseling to talk about the open marriage concept. I told him just proposing an open marriage was grounds for divorce for me, and I wasn't willing to go to a counselor for them to gang up on me to try to bully me into trying it. I know in reality that never would have happened, but emotions were high in the moment. Because I told him I could never see him the same, and how badly this crushed any self-confidence I may have had, he doubled down. He said if we go back into a relationship and pretend this never happened, then he would end up cheating on me. For him, it was open marriage or nothing. I chose nothing. Divorce papers were filed exactly one week later. He was very hurt angry that I could jump right to divorce and kick him out of our bedroom so fast. But I refused to be a second choice or have to fight for his attention. I can't believe he is okay with the idea of another person being inside of me. He is willing to just give me up to explore his options. I can't believe I wasted so much of my time with him. Helping him heal his family and raise his sister. I feel completely used. Advice? Did I overreact? Should I have waited longer before filing for divorce? Should I have just gone to marriage counseling? Or was my gut instinct correct about the marriage being over? I still love and care about him, but my brain is screaming to be logical. We still live together while we are trying to figure out how to split everything, but now he is being super toxic and petty, saying hurtful things, and then begging for personal details about my life. I need to get out of this house. How do I cope with these complicated feelings? TLDR my husband blindsided me with wanting an open marriage, so I moved him to our spare bedroom while he wasn't home and filed for divorce a week later. Edit update. Hello, all. I wanted to say thank you all for the support. As for the update, where do I even start? It has officially been over the required 90 days since initially filing for divorce before it can be deemed official. I am going to the courthouse tomorrow to file the remaining paperwork. We had an easy, uncontested divorce. We agreed on pretty much everything and he didn't even give me a hard time about taking our two cats that are quite attached to me, he was always the spare human. I bought a small home for myself and said two cats and moved a few days ago. I won't lie, this whole process was very tough for me emotionally. It was especially hard considering he was constantly hot and then cold. He would jump from name calling and trying to control who came over to our house to finding reasons to call me on the phone all day and joking around with me like nothing was wrong. I feel like I have emotional whiplash from the last three months of living with him, while looking for a new place to live. At one point, he came home to see me eating a meal I just cooked during a break from packing. It was pretty disorganized, but I was doing multiple things at the same time. He saw the mess and started yelling at me for it and throwing my things around the kitchen. Another day, he texted me, asking me why I wasn't interested in where he had been spending his days off and later sheepishly asking if he would drop the open marriage demand. Would I ever consider trying again? Of course, I told him we were way past that, considering the multiple times he promised he would cheat on me if we didn't open the marriage. Also, I did get STD tested and came back clean as a whistle. I don't think he was already cheating. But he is damned embarrassed about this whole thing. He wants me to tell people he cheated on me when they ask why we are getting divorced instead of telling the truth of the matter. He was made aware in advance that after I moved and the divorce was finalized, I would be going no contact. I did all the legwork to make this happen, including getting all divorce paperwork and 2023 taxes filed, separating all bills and bank accounts, 
hiding the address to my new home, blocking him on all social media. And I will even be changing my phone number once everything is finalized. He feels that me going without contact is vindictive. No matter what he has said and done to hurt me, I still have a lot of love for this man. He doesn't deserve it, I know. But that is exactly why I need to go no contact. It's for my own peace and to maintain some semblance of self-respect. I can't tell him that because I don't want to give him or myself, tbh any false hope that we could work things out. I have no plans to be with anyone else in the near or distant future. I just want to work on building my confidence and getting a healthier mindset. I haven't gotten to counseling yet, like many have suggested. I was in survival mode for the last three months so I could get out of that hellish situation. Now that I'm in my new house and getting unpacked, I'm sure I will be able to relax enough to start feeling better soon. And if I don't, I have every intention of seeking professional help. I have a huge support network between friends and family. Our shared friends were all on my side as well. Not that there is a true right or wrong in a situation like this. But one of his best friends telling him, this was the biggest mistake of his life, was incredibly validating. The only thing I regret from my relationship with him is staying as long as I did. Despite all the red flags I ignored throughout the years, I went into detail on some of them in the comments. All I know is that I'm feeling a mix of relief and grief. I just need some time to allow myself to heal. Out of our many conversations, he told me that 99% of open marriages fail because they were opened for failing marriages, and that since we had a great relationship, we would have been fine. I tried explaining to him that I learned from some of you guys that what he suggested was not an open marriage, but was parallel polyamory, and it was the most difficult form of polyamory to achieve. He didn't care and was only focused on convincing me to work it out with him. For me, there is nothing to work out. He wants to be with someone else and to fall in love again. So I am giving him the freedom to do that, but gracefully stepping back. As many have said, you don't get to have your cake and eat it too. There isn't much more to say on the matter. I said I was leaving, and I did it. Here's to hoping 2024 is my year. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.